welcome to Marrying Bay's YouTube channel. Today, we are going to discuss about diesel engine governance. Under this topic, we can discuss mechanical governance, hydraulic servo governance, and the governance with compensation, and the effect of this compensation rate and range adjustment. Then uh, we can move to speed and load sensing governance, uh, remote speed setting and load setting, how we can do. Then with the governor evolution, we can move to electronic governors and then the actuator part. Finally, we can discuss uh, the real life governor. I will use the UG8 governor cross section and then we can uh, match and we can discuss with the theory that we already learned. Then we can compare the actual governor arrangement where these theories apply and how we can tally these two then the governor fold and special features will be discussed. So as an introduction, so I would like to discuss uh, the governor uh, types of governance. We can divide it into two groups. First group, we can divide it, its operational concept. So there are two types of governors with the operational concept. First one is isochronous governor. The second one is group governor. Actually, isochronous means the constant speed, and the group governor, the one which vary its uh, speed with the load change. Then the other group is um, the construction advice. The first one is mechanical governor, and the second one will be uh, servo hydraulic governors, and the third one is the electronic governors. So here we will first move to discuss a bit about this isochronous and the group principle. Governance. Operational wise, we can divide into constant speed and the group governance. To discuss this, we can take small example. Suppose there's a rider taking a taxi. So he's giving the instructions to taxi driver. You have to maintain constant speed. Doesn't matter whatever the circumstances. So, the driver will always regulate the gas pedal, he will throttle the fuel to maintain the car speed at the same. In the same scenario, in an engine, the governor will sense the speed and regulate the fuel to maintain its set point given by the operator. Suppose in group governors, it is a bit different case. When the load is increases, then the speed will drop. So the governor, there is a feedback lever arrangement. So the governor will sense the RP, the speed. And also, uh, whenever there is the speed change due to load change, suppose increasing in load, then uh, it will not settle in the same RPM. Always it will settle in the less RPM or lesser value, lower value. Now we can move to the next categorization. So that is uh, construction advice, mechanical governance and uh, servo hydraulic governance and the electronic governance. Mm -hmm. Evolution of governance. So the next categorization of governance that we can take with the uh, construction advice. So here you can see in uh, the first one in the left hand, uh, mechanical governance. And then uh, we can see servo hydraulic governance thereafter, electrical and tronic governance. So the first one was mechanical governor, depend uh, due to its uh, some um, disadvantages. Uh, then they have to go to the uh, servo hydraulic governance, uh, especially when we consider the governor effort in mechanical governance, the effort was less. So to increase the governor effort, to increase the output torque. So they have implied uh, servo hydraulic governance. Thereafter, to minimize dead band, so the electrical and tronic governance introduced. So with more accurate control and more precise control, uh, we can uh, gain from the electrical or tronic governance. Um, now we will move to next session. Uh, to discuss about mechanical governance in detail. Okay, so we can move to mechanical governance. 
here are four diagrams the first one is on animation of uh, mechanical govern and the second one is the diagram of uh, illustrating how the its arrangement is and then the actual view of mechanical governing components the small one is the theory of centrifugal force so for better understanding it's better to have good knowledge about centrifugal force so basically we can discuss suppose there's a mass moving in uh, around on this uh, center uh, center of axis with a radius of r and then the centrifugal force is equal to m omega squared r so we can see as per this equation if we want to increase the centrifugal force then we would have to increase the mass or we can increase the speed of rotation or else we can increase the radius more the centrifugal force then the effort to uh, get away from its center of axis will be greater so depending uh, using this uh, principle they have designed mechanical govern so this illustration you can see there are two flyweights which is connected to this spindle and then the sleeve is connected to this one this whole drive is driven by a bevel gear arrangement this horizontal bevel is connected to the engine so always the engine speed will be applied on this uh, bell crank arrangement with the flyweights thereafter this bell crank lever arrangement is used to throttle the fuel suppose the engine speed is varies so then this flyweight arrangement speed also vary you can have more better view in this animation so we can see whenever the speed drops this flyweight due to its uh, lesser centrifugal force they are getting closer to its center of axis so which in return will cause to shift this yellow sleeve to its topmost position causing to open more fuel to engine then the engine speed will increase due to increase of fuel then in returns the fly weights will move away due to its increased centrifugal force causing this sleeve to move down thus the fuel will be closed or the regulate to reduce the engine load so this is the working principle of a mechanical gun here is the real arrangement these are the fly weights and here is the bell crank arrangement and the bevel gears are here so this one is the the port uh, i mean the fuel inlet is here you can see the fuel inlet it is here so now uh, we have discussed about mechanical ness basically so there are some limitation of this gun the first one is limited governor effort that means the output torque is less so if you want to move a larger fuel rack in a bigger engine the effort is less so to gain this torque you have to uh, install a big uh, governor so big governor with a huge flyweights uh, the the the, the yeah the big flyweights so it then there will be another difficulties that means when the components are bigger then the inertia forces will be higher so uh, the machinery is will be bigger apart from that there will be high frictional potential in mechanical moving arrangements always the frictional potential is higher than the liquid or the electronics so the whenever the frictional potential high that we have losses and the dead band also will be more the dead band uh, the term dead band means that is the time period there will be no any output response while the uh, speed is uh, affected suppose there this is the mechanical uh, this is a mechanical device 
So there will be always inertia force. These flyweights will be turning at a, some speed, at a speed. Due to some load, the engine speed will reduce. But that amount of uh, reduction in engine speed should be sufficient enough to overcome this inertia, I mean this frictional forces and this inertia state to change its state. If it is not sufficient, the flyweight RPM will not affect it. So that time period which that uh, initiating time of the changing in uh, output uh, shaft, we call it the dead band. I mean the time there is no action of output fuel regulation, we call it the dead band. So uh, the other one is this arrangement is unstable. That because Whenever the speed is dropped, then the flyweights will be get closer and open the fuel. So then the engine RPM will be rise. Same like a sine wave. Whenever the speed less, the uh, fuel increase and the uh, engine will recover the RPM, take the RPM and again, uh, once it reaches to its RPM, then the fuel will be again throttled. So there will be always some kind of sign up so ideal arrangement we are the, the the behavior there so it's unstable and then unique speed with each load the last one suppose if we want to have group characteristic i mean group uh, arrangement that means with the load we want to reduce the rpm suppose when there is the increment of the load then if we want to reduce the engine uh, rpm such governor uh, is not giving such facility with this basic arrangement. So to overcome this, we have to move on to the other arrangement. That means with the uh, servo hydraulic governors. So today's session, uh, I'm going to stop here. And uh, on next video, we will be discussing about hydraulic governors. So be in touch. And if you are not subscribed yet, you can subscribe and uh, please uh, ring the bell to get the notification so be in touch to get the latest information and the uh, lecture notes um, we will discuss in deep about hydraulic governors with the compensation arrangement group arrangement and uh, load sensing and uh, speed sensing governors uh, many things with the actual ug8 governor cross-sectional and uh, this thing will be discussed on our next video. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, we will meet in again in our next video. Mm -hmm.